Hi everyone, Jonas Sensen from Science Filmmaking Tips here. As much as I love to be outside and be creative with the camera, I know it's a really great day, but it's just nice to be outside testing out the new motorized slider from Zipon. I think many of you who are working with video probably agree with me that this is where we end up spending most of our time actually editing the videos together. And this is what I want to touch on today. Today I want to bring up some features in Final Cut that I use on pretty much every project that I work on. So this is a video for those of you who already kind of know the basics of Final Cut and you're familiar with the program and you just want to find ways to kind of step up your workflow a little bit. But with that said, if you are already an advanced user, you're already pretty fast in the program, then this video might not be so much for you. This is not going to be a video focusing solely on quick commands and quick keys. So I have 10 things listed uh, that I use for most of my projects uh, and I just want to dive right into it. All right, so first up, a feature that I use all the time in the beginning of my editing process, it's overwrite to primary storyline and lift from storyline. This is what a project looks like for me early in the process. I know it looks pretty messy because there's uh, multiple layers, clips on top of each other, um, and it doesn't look clean at all. But this is how I like to start out. I'm shuffling clips around, moving them quickly, without messing up the timing. For example, if I'm trying to match everything to an audio track, a music track, having things down in the primary storyline, I feel it makes it a little bit more difficult because of the magnetic timeline. So when I start out, this is how I do it. And I move things around, nothing happens. But then as I'm getting closer to a final edit, I wanna start cleaning things up and add final touches like transitions and that kind of stuff, which I believe is easier down in the main timeline. So this is what I want to get to. When I have a clip that is in position and I know it's going to stay there, I right click and I scroll down to overwrite to primary storyline. Boom, it jumps down on the main storyline first layer. And when I have clips aligned like this, I can easily add transitions, final touches, that kind of stuff. And it also looks a lot cleaner when you have them down there. But then say you want to change something. If I'm just taking this clip and I'm dragging it somewhere, then it's going to mess up my whole timeline. So I usually prefer to just move it up to an upper layer before I start moving things around so I don't mess up the timing that I've already established. So to do that, I right click again on the main storyline and then I say lift from storyline. Boom, up again into an upper layer and I can move it without actually changing anything in my main storyline. Easy peasy, I can start moving things down again, clean up the timeline, make it look nice and tidy. Second thing, temporarily activating position tool. I know I will get comments on this unless I mention it. You can, of course, move things around in the main timeline without messing up the timing as well. And to do that, you use the tool position, quick key is P. So say you wanna just do a quick change or a quick uh, adjustment, instead of having to do the whole lift from storyline, uh, and then switch the clip around and then bring it back down again, it takes a little while. You, you can temporarily activate the position tool. And you do this by holding down P, while you're pressing it down, position will be activated. But then as soon as you let go, you're back to normal again. Number three, filter presets. In Final Cut, you don't have the option of adding an adjustment layer, basically a layer that you can do all the changes to and all the clips below it will have those effects or those adjustments. Instead, you will have to add the effects, add the adjustments to each individual clip. But you don't want to spend a lot of time just doing the same adjustments over and over and over again. So there are a couple of ways that you can add the same adjustments that you've just made to one clip to a batch of other clips. So two ways to do it. The first way you can do this is you do a copy of the clip that you made all the adjustments to, and then you highlight the clip or multiple clips that you wanna add those adjustments to, and you go up to edit, and then paste attributes. And this allows you to choose which attributes you wanna to add to those clips. And there you have it. All those attributes that you've made to just one clip are now added to all of your selected clips. And the next way to do it is to create a preset. And the benefit of creating a preset is that this is something that will stay within the pro uh, program. So you can add the, uh, these same effects, these same adjustments to later projects as well. To do this, you're making adjustments to one clip. And when you feel happy with it, you go up to here and you say save preset. You can name it whatever you want. You can even add it to a new subcategory if you like. And there you go. 
Now you have a preset and it will be there for any other projects that you work on later as well. Great stuff. All right, number four, synchronize clips from multiple cameras. Let's say you shot something on two or more cameras and now you want to synchronize those clips. It takes a really long time to do it manually if you just want to line everything up manually. But now you can let Final Cut quickly do it for you instead. So to do that, you go up into the browser, you highlight the clips that you wish to sync. With the clips highlighted, you right click and you choose synchronize clips. The Final Cut will then create a sub clip where the audio and video from both cameras or all cameras are included. And now you just make your selection in the synchronized clip, drop it in the timeline, and if you double click it, you will open up different video layers. And from there, you can select which camera to show and when. And then if you go up to the audio settings, you can choose to mute certain audio tracks if they were just recording bad audio, for example. Number five, basic color correction. Color correction is a whole video in itself. Actually, no, it's not a whole video in itself. It's a whole series of videos in itself. So this is just gonna be the very basics just to get familiar with some of the features of the color correction options in Final Cut. Up here is where you will find your built-in color correction. Now you have four different color correction windows to choose from. Oh, and just so you know, you can change the default color correction window that appears when you click the icon and you do that up here in your preferences. Curves, great place to start. Classic is a slight S curve like this, which will increase your contrast a little bit. You drag up the highlights and you pull down the shadows. And if you want to wash out the blacks just a little bit, you can drag this end point up here. And if you have a clip where the white balance is all messed up, this happens to me a lot, especially when we're shooting inside in labs where there's a lot of fluorescent lights. And a lot of times when we'll be shooting with white balance set automatic because we're moving between locations, uh, this always happens. Then the shots may turn out kind of yellow. And this is something that I'm fighting a lot when I'm editing uh, science videos. Then a first quick fix that you can try is to go up to the color tab here and drag the highlight point to either increase the blues or decrease the yellows. You can also go to the color wheels and if you scroll down a little bit, you will find a white balance slider. Again, color correction, there's a whole lot more to address here and we should probably get back to this as well in future videos. Number six, audio fades. One thing you will have to do for pretty much every project at some point is to fade audio uh, to prevent really abrupt audio cuts. And this is how you do it in Final Cut. First, to simply fade the audio at the end of a clip, you drag this little circle in. Then an extra tip is to first extend the audio track to make it fade better with the following clip. So if you double click the clip to open the audio track like this, you can now change the length of the audio and video components individually. And if you then extend the audio track and then fade it, it will blend better with the clip afterwards. Also, if you right click the little point, you will get four different fade types. I use pretty much all of them, but at different times. Number seven, highlight favorites. If you ask me, one of the best built-in features of Final Cut is the option to highlight favorite sections of a long clip. For example, I shoot a lot of interviews and most of the time I just let the camera roll, which ends up being a really long clip most of the time. And I know I'm only gonna use a small section of that. So I wanna go through it once and I wanna just highlight different parts that I know I wanna come back to. So to do that, you go through the clip and when you get to a point that you like, you hit I, which will give it an in point, and then you go to the end of the segment that you like and you hit O, which will give it an out point. Now to favorite that selection, you just hit the key F and a green little line will appear above that section. This little green bar means that this section is now labeled as a favorite. And now you can repeat this as many times as you wish, even on the same clip. And then you can just go back to your green marks and easily find the good parts. And if you click the green bar, the selection gets highlighted so you can easily just drop the whole thing into the timeline. Super helpful. Next tip, basic title. Now this is a quick command tip. Now you can get fancy with titles in a project, but I still end up using the basic title most of the time. And to get to the basic title, you have to go up to the title drop down menu here, and then go search for the basic title, and then click it, and it will appear in your timeline. But this is a quick command that is good to remember. Instead of having to go through that whole thing with a drop down menu, just go Control T and boom, a new basic title is added to your timeline. Time saver. 
Lastly, I have two functions that refer to finding your clips in your browser. It may sound like poor organization if you don't know where your clips are. Uh, and yeah, maybe, maybe it is, but I still think it's useful to know. Uh, so first is to find the clip in the browser. Now you have it in the timeline. Now you're looking for the original clip, but you can't find it. So just right click the clip in the timeline and choose reveal in browser. Simple as that. And then if you want to find the original file on the hard drive, just right click again and choose reveal in finder. Good to know if you get yourself in a situation when you need it, trust me. And lastly, related to the previous point, but maybe also more so the option of highlighting favorite sections is the option to mark out all the parts of the clips that are being used in the timeline. So if you go up to view, then browser and choose used media ranges, all the sections of every clip that you are using in the timeline will be marked in orange, similar to the favorite sections are marked in green. This is a great way to keep track of what you're using and prevent you from accidentally adding the same clip twice. And there you have it, a bundle of random, but trust me, really useful tips and tricks to help you with your Final Cut edits. <laughs> All right, so I hope you liked these tips uh, and please let me know in the comments box below if you found them useful and if you want more videos on editing tips and tricks and techniques as well. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and see you in the next video.